Good afternoon, Keith Tebow back with you. Uh, we're continuing our look at speaking with some of our representatives from our area schools as uh, back to school is happening sooner rather than later. Um, as we're recording this, most schools will be back next week, uh, beginning uh, September 1st or the week uh, of that uh, September 1st start. And today we're going to speak to our good friend, Andrew Rebello, the assistant uh, uh, principal, actually the principal, the assistant superintendent at Diamond Regional Vocational Technical High School. Andrew, how are you? Thanks for joining me again. I'm doing well, Keith. Thanks uh, for having me here again. I hope you had a great summer. And uh, like you and everyone, um, we're excited for a new school year. We are ready to go back. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about Diamond as we head into the uh, the new school year. I guess first and foremost, uh, the question on a lot of people's minds is, what will be happening in terms of COVID protocols and masks? I know that, again, as we're recording this, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education is going to be providing some guidance in terms of uh, students and staff being masks for the first month of the year. And I'm, I'm sure that the, uh, the school will be following that advice, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And our district policy uh, is to follow whatever the state guidelines are. Um, so the state released some recommendations on uh, July 30th, uh, but we are expecting uh, another vote tomorrow by the Board of Education um, recommended by the commissioner uh, to mandate masks in all schools, K through 12. Um, so we'll see what happens tomorrow uh, with the commissioner um, going to uh, the Board of Education to make that vote. Um, but education across uh, the state and, and this nation has been upended. Right. It, formally, when you're going into a new school year, you pick up your plans and say, all right, this is what we're going to do with a few minor tweaks. Um, COVID, the COVID ever era of education has upended the way we do things. I give a, I have a tremendous amount of respect for educators across the nation as we prepare for, um, you know, tweaking and keeping our kids safe again this year. And, um, you know, Diamond has the best educators in the business and, and, and we're really going to answer the call again this year. And we are excited to see all students this year. And, uh, you know, even if it's in masks, we will certainly keep our kids safe um, every way we can. But we are going to wait for that vote tomorrow and then send comprehensive guidance to all of our students, staff and families. So we don't leave any stone unturned uh, this new school year. So everyone knows exactly what the protocols are. And we're going to go from there. You know, when we uh, we've spoken on a number of occasions about things that have been happening at Diamond and and last school year, there was sort of a, a hybrid model, if you will. Um, students were, uh, by and large, you know, in the facility taking their their shops and their shops week, and then you know the academic side of things, they were you know more remote than not to take their academics. And now that everyone is going to be back fully, and we'll talk about what that means and the excitement around that in a moment. But in terms of getting ready for having people come back, was there any other things that needed to be done physically at the school to prepare for the new school year? Yeah, so we want to prepare our teachers as best as possible, right? Our, our big motto is, is getting kids life ready and getting our educators to bring their best versions of themselves to school every day so they can affect change in our students. As far as what we're looking at uh, as preparation goes, again, it's going to come with that vote tomorrow. Uh, and then from there, we will, as feasible, distance as possible. So that means maybe some distancing for lunches, um, reassessing all of our protocols from hallway transitions to bathroom usage uh, to lunches as well. Um, so there are things in preparation. You know, we're going to be fully stocked, uh, hand sanitizer, making sure there's uh, available masks to use. So these are things that are ongoing in process. Um, just knowing the situation with COVID and how fluid it has been, we have certainly been uh, ready on that end as far as preparing our school from a PPE and technical perspective. Uh, but in academic and vocational shops, as feasible, we'll be looking at those spaces to ensure that um, there's distancing when possible. Uh, and then from a curriculum perspective, to answer your question, Keith, there has been a, a tremendous amount of work that our educators have put in uh, to identify where learning loss has happened, where what curriculum was missed the past year. You know, in the first, uh, in the first question, I addressed that, uh, you know, education has been upended. Um, so we're not sitting back and waiting for it to come up to us. At the end of last year, we gave a diagnostic test to all of our students to see what was missed, where they, where we need to accelerate learning. Um, so we're going to go into this new school year with a lot of data on each student on what they missed academically, what they missed vocationally, reteaching what we have to, and then pushing forward. Think about it. Kids were hybrid. Um, you know, that education model doesn't work for everyone. 
We're going to have students back in the building this year and we'll really be able to accelerate all students learning. Because one thing we did learn from this, right, there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of change. But one thing that remains constant is students learning in person is the best educational model. And I think we do it better than anyone else, as we have shown with the incredible educators and incredible administration we have. One final COVID related question, you know, in terms of uh, coming back, um, you know, you actually had the opportunity to uh, set up standards in terms of protocols in the shops, because by and large, those students were in in the building. Right. So, you know, where there's a lot of uh, close contact in, in some shop areas, depending on the shop and the vocational education, you were able to make arrangements there. And then on the academic side, you know, when a lot of students were remote in some ways, um, that's easier to remedy coming back, correct? Because they're sitting in what was called the traditional cat classroom with with desk and the like. So mm -hmm. has it been maybe a little easier because you already took care of that, you know, vocational piece last year? Yeah, yeah and, and, and that's why it, in May, we ended up bringing back all students with some protocols in place. Um, so you are, we are gonna be using some of the same uh, line of thinking with, with trying to take uh, precautionary measures across the board as far as uh, hand sanitizing and hand hygiene protocols, mask protocols. And we learned a lot of that as we as we went through last year because we had to develop it for the vocational side because we brought those kids in on day one. Um, and as we went and continued to bring more and more students back, especially on the academic side, we we're able to use uh, some of those protocols to mimic uh, both. So, you know, looking back at last year, we, we definitely learned a lot and we uh, are going to be able to use some of the things uh, that were successful to us. And that's what we do every year. So there's nothing different as far as tweaking and, and consistently looking and, and, and consistently making sure we're providing the best education possible and continuing to do what this community has come to expect from Diamond. And that's providing a world-class education. So that means constant improvement on our end and continue to look at, you know, how we're going to educate kids in a safe way. So we're certainly going to be using some of that uh, from last year. You know, everyone we've spoken to really looking forward to having as normal an experience this year um, as possible. So let me just ask you, um, how are all of you uh, getting ready and getting excited for that first day on September 1st to to have as normal as experience as you can have that we haven't seen in quite some time? Yeah, I tell you what, uh, to, to hear these hallways buzzing again. Uh, is going to be something that I look forward to. And we got a taste of it last year when we brought all of our students back in May for the last four weeks of school. Um, but to start fresh from this year, there's there's nothing better than that. There's nothing better uh, in this life, at least for me and, and the educators here at Diamond, is, is uh, working with students and growing them to reach their full potential and producing graduates that are life ready. So the opportunity to have kids back in person, face to face, um, is, is extremely exciting. So we have some special things coming up that uh, I won't release yet, uh, but for our students to celebrate them and our staff to celebrate them um, in the true diamond fashion. And one of them uh, might be revolved around a uh, student and staff cookout before our first home football game. Um, we are going to try to bring back uh, all of our students um, to to attend that event and our staff. And, and uh, we're a family here at Diamond. We're a true com community. Uh, so a few special events for our students and staff as as we start uh, one of the most important years in uh, in education. So let me ask you, what are some of the exciting new things that students can expect to see this year, either academically, you know, extracurricularly um, mm -hmm. that, you know, we would normally talk about for the, in the first eight minutes yeah. of an interview like this as we head yeah. to a new year? Absolutely. One of them is the extracurricular activities, right? So the sports uh, today was the first day of preseason camp. So to see the football team out there, the soccer team, volleyball, uh, you know, practicing uh, in person again. If you remember, we didn't have a fall sports season last year. We had to have it in the spring. Um, so to see them back out there and the coaches, um, you know, it's exciting to see. And, and that's one thing I'm very excited for sports, but also all of our extracurricular activities from, uh, you know, art club to photography to guitar club to to. Um, Spanish classes after school. We are very excited uh, for this new school year to see our kids um, not only during the first shift, but we what we like to call the second shift. And that's really exposing our kids uh, to extracurricular activities and really growing them in uh, 
you know, the, the social emotional aspect of their lives. So it's academic and vocation all day and then extracurriculars after school. And I, I'm for one, very excited to, for that. What about in terms of numbers? I know we've talked in the past about how, um, you know, you receive a number of applications each year, um, students looking to, to gain access to Diamond. How do the numbers look for the new year? Yeah, so for freshmen this year, um, we do have 375 new freshmen um, coming in uh, on September 1st. They actually have new freshman orientation or new student orientation uh, this week. So they're coming in and, and those 375 students will learn where their locker is, learn how to access their schedules, grades, see where their classes are, learn about our, uh, you know, the policies here, the student handbook, um, dress code, things like that. We're really gonna go this week and uh, really get on top of that. Um, so that they come in prepared um, because once we're prepared, students will be successful after the fact. So we're well beyond 700 applications for 375 spots. Um, and uh, we have 375 new freshmen this year and we can't wait to bring them into the uh, Diamond family. Anything new academically that uh, students will be able to take advantage of that may not have been offered in the past? Yeah, one thing, uh, you, you've heard me say it a lot, Keith, right? And it's that term life ready. So there's a new uh, a new uh, or, uh, requirement for students this year to graduate and every student will take a financial literacy course in grade 12, right? So I, I think that one thing that to stay in the motto of that life ready platform is getting them ready to um, take on the financial burdens that come with life. So there's gonna be a financial literacy course for every senior uh, before they leave high school. And that's something that we hope to continue um, going forward. We'll still have our um, CAP program uh, that's with Bristol Community College. Um, so students are able to take classes uh, their junior and senior year um, over at BCC and replace a few courses here. Um, so there's a, there's a many things, especially on the academic side, uh, that will be new and exciting for students to uh, try out. But I'm very excited about those things. Yeah. And uh, and finally, uh, update on uh, the new school. Uh, you know, the new BMC Durfee High School is going to be opening uh, next week on September 1st. And, you know, we've talked about in the past the plans for a new Diamond Regional Vocational Technical High School. Uh, what's the latest, if anything, you can share uh, about that progress? Yeah, we're moving into the next phase of, uh, of planning our school. So we're, we've identified a location uh, a sustainable and fiscally responsible location to build a new school on campus so we wouldn't have to go anywhere else. We'd be able to keep school going um, in our current building while this project is being built. Um, so the next step is building the, in, the nitty gritty inside of the building, uh, what classrooms look like, what vocational spaces look like, and the need's never been uh, greater than now. Um, vocational education and, and producing life-ready students uh, is is absolutely essential and vital to this community. And I've said this before uh, on the show with you, Keith, is a vote for a new diamond uh, is a vote for a better Greater Fall River. Uh, and that's that's undoubtedly been proven. Um, so right now we're still in the planning phase. We have identified where it would go, how we would build it. And, and like I've told you before, it's going to be the most physically responsible project uh, because as you know, there are multiple projects going up around us. So that's something we want to bring to the voter, right? We trust the intellect of our voters in this community. Um, and that's and, and, and we will certainly capitalize on sharing all the information that we can. So no stone is left unturned as far as what people know about this project, how much it would cost. Um, so the next phase here is, is designing the inside and then uh, a vote will go to the city and the towns in the springtime, but we still have some time before that. So we're still designing um, every single space um, to not only meet the high excellence that we've had uh, here at the school, but continue to produce graduates that will supply the next generation of workforce for this community and the next uh, generation of life ready diamond graduates. All right, Andrew Rebello, Assistant Superintendent and Principal of Diamond Regional Vocational Technical High School. As always, thank you for your time and I'm sure we'll We'll catch up as the new school year goes on, and hopefully there'll be uh, more good news, not only about, uh, you know, hopefully relaxing more of these uh, COVID mandates, but also some great news coming out of Diamond. I appreciate your time. Awesome, Keith. Thank you so much. Have a good one. All right. And thank you for joining us today here on FRC Media. I'm Keith Tebow. Have a great day.